Good evening to you. We all know smiles have been few and far between here in Ferguson, but a bond between those two friends is shining a bright spot during this time of darkness. There you go. When children build blocks, they are creative. My six year old loves to build things. He built builds towers and when he gets done, he'll yell at me. Hey, hey, daddy, come look at what I built. But too often the masterpiece tumbles. And like most parents, Matt Miofsky. I think parents have to do a lot, which is kneel down and say, come on, George, let's uh, let's build it back. And not far from where Mike Brown was killed. What do you think, Claire Bear? Rebuilding is underway at Wellspring Church. Miofsky's friend, Willis Johnson, is the pastor. <laughs> Wellspring and Kim's The two pastors, friends for seven years, teamed up to provide a healthy playtime for students in Ferguson. School has been canceled because of violence. Our task is to, to meet needs at the time in which they exist in the, in the context or in the situation in which they exist with, uh, with uh, an, un, an unconditional love. One of the things that Ferguson has exposed is there's a lot of people who want to do something, but there, there's no relationship. It can be a burden. It's also um, a, a distinct privilege. And so I think it's important that, that as we as we model, as we witness, as we are who we are. You like that one? Rebuilding Ferguson is similar to children starting over after their blocks fall. God calls us to be reconcilers, to be people who participate along with him at, at, at bridging what's divided and, and helping to put things back together. And just before lunch, all of the children and the volunteers formed a circle. They all ran around the circle and said what they were thankful for. One of the youngsters, a young male, told the group he was thankful he was able to be at the church with his old friends, and he was happy about meeting new ones. Back to you. Life changed for Donella Connor the day police fired a beanbag round that hit her eye. I'm hurt because, you know, I will never see my left eye again, but... <laughs> You know, I'm just, I'm just really thankful that I'm here to see the world and you and, and my kids. It was Tuesday morning at this gas station. A spokesperson with St. Louis County Police said the initial call detailed reports of looting and rioting following the grand jury's decision. 16 people were arrested. There wasn't no one on the lot going haywire. Since then, the 24-year-old has felt a medley of emotions. All I felt was a, a, a blast in my face. <laughs> I have been getting nightmares about it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just trying to stay strong. She wants to stay strong for her children. I was worried about my mama, and I didn't want nothing to happen to her, and I don't want nothing to happen to my family. I wish this was never ever going to happen. There's other strategies that I feel that could have been done. By contrast, county police say the driver of the vehicle came toward them, forcing them to take action. I'm just thankful that I'm alive to see my kids, my, my family. This hug from her youngest daughter, perhaps the best medicine for a mother who only smiled today when talking about being able to see her children. I'm just thankful because, you know, I thought I was, was dead. But some residents fear if that protest that we've seen so many nights in the streets starts up again, getting a lift to places like this shopping center might be tough. We trust you in our faith. Yes. As this community searches for answers, T.T. <laughs> Blanchard is searching for employment. It's been really hard because we get blocked in at night, and if you don't have a car and you're walking, it becomes even more dangerous. The registered nurse lives here in the complex where Mike Brown was gunned down. She said it was impossible to get to work in the days following the shooting, which she says led to her dismissal. Plus, she feared for her safety. She was just pretty much asking, like, well, can you get to work tonight? And I'm just like, you know what? I don't know because, like, it's been really dangerous. So the safest thing for me to do is stay in the house. Managers at the nursing home weren't available for comment. Reverend Jesse Jackson learned about the incident at today's vigil. He believes the problem can be solved. That seems to be a hostile workplace, and Reverend Bobo, the ministers here will address that particular situation, okay? I think most people in this community, white and black alike, do not feel that way. A present help in the time of need. Blanchard said despite losing her job, her suffering is nothing compared to the Brown family. I'm just waiting for everything to pretty much blow over so I can either get out here and find another job to, you know, worry about my well-being. Sifting through rubble, Janice Andrews clutches pieces of her dream. 
It's shattered, but not broken. I want to keep my business. I lost things, but I haven't lost my dream. This is all that's left of hidden treasures. Monday night, she watched as flames destroyed her shop and the neighboring Little Caesars. It was fearful. Last night, I was breaking down over there. I broke down. God has strengthened me because I lost my father this year. That's her father on the right, Reverend James Pittman. When the building burned, Andrew said she felt like she lost him all over again. And he built that wall for me. He opened it up because I had two sides in there. And when I was in there in my store, I felt so close to him. And just the memories of him being there. If you ask Andrews what she will miss most. My customers, if I don't reveal. In Ferguson, Adrian Broadus, News Channel 5. Anger. I am so angry because they destroyed somebody's business. No one should have to deal with this again. But the man everyone knows as Robert is dealing the best way. He knows how. <laughs> the pizza shop he manages plus the antique shop next door burned. If you can't laugh, you're going to cry and I'm going to do both. <laughs> His friends are helping. We will rebuild. We will come back. That's Rick Maxiden, pastor, insurance adjuster, and Ferguson resident. Even when things look bleak, hope. And look around, and this looks bleak, but come back in a year, and it'll, there'll be business. Torch tables and broken glass blanket the lobby at Fish and Chicken. The managers here hope to rebuild in three months. As business owners put up barriers to eighth graders. I made about like 240 cookies last night. Hand out their prescription for the pain. I feel like everyone's right now is in a little ball of energy with anger and confusion. So I feel like cookies just make everything happy. And as nightfall approaches, everyone hopes they don't go through this again. Leading like a tour guide. This was my front entrance. Juanita Morris returns to the Delwood business she worked so hard to build. It's hard when you see your building burning from home and no fire department, nobody to, to put it out. Friday, Morris stood with Mayor Reggie Jones, who called on Governor Nixon for financial help for their city. It borders Ferguson. And it's kind of frustrating when you're watching TV and you're the mayor and you see a news crew that's right in the middle of your city and they say they're in Ferguson. And so I want to make sure that we're not left out of any possible resources. In a statement, Governor Nixon said about $625,000 in zero interest loan funding is available for impacted businesses. But State Senator Gina Walsh says that's not enough. These people do not want loans. I will tell you that. These people have taken loans the first round. We have to come up with some kind of loan forgiveness. These melted tights, an ugly reminder of what was once here. The mayor says 13 businesses burned. Meanwhile, pictures Juanita took before the fire show the clothes and jewelry she sold. But the boutique bearing her name was also a place of comfort. Me and my employees was there to listen and also to uh, encourage. And that is what she wants back more than anything. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged because I know sometimes bad things happen, but good things come out of it. So that's what I'm looking for. Adrian Broadus, News Channel 5. And good evening to you. Since that 2 p.m. news conference, this is the loudest we've heard protesters. They're remaining peaceful, but much like the Brown family, they're very critical of the chief's decision to release that footage and those pictures, but they plan to take action. The protesters are ready for battle. This community is very, very mad right now. And they are armed with weapons. We're going to fight back with our mom. We ain't going to keep on, we ain't going to, all this burning down on me now, we're going to fight with our mom this time. We're trying to fight back. After waiting six days, the officer involved in the Mike Brown shooting was named. Anger and passion followed. This officer needs to be to jail. No bail, no pay, none of that. He don't need nothing. It doesn't matter if he took a cigarette, he took a rello. The bottom line was he shouldn't have been shot like that. That was like murder. Uh, but I could say, to me, the police was angry. The police chief is, is pulling out all his little bags of tricks. Now this community is left wondering what Brown's alleged involvement in a robbery has to do with the shooting. He was executed. When I was brought up in school, they told me execution was down. Put your hands behind your back and you shot and you dead. He was like this. He was saying, please don't shoot me anymore. So what do I, what do 
for me as my people, where do we go from there? The last hour or so, Captain Johnson has been out talking to protesters. He says until we get some answers, this is what you will see. People standing in the street, protesting and voicing their opinion. Back to you. What happened to Mike Brown hurts, but even Missouri Attorney General Chris Coster said it hurts more because members in this community lost someone. At the hands of a member of my community, not just the Caucasian community, but the law enforcement community. On the Lord's Day, People hurting like Verdina Colbert found comfort through song and the message from Reverend Al Sharpton and state leaders at Greater St. Mark Family Church in Ferguson. I have already been there and I was saying I can witness to that. I am a mother of uh, two murdered sons. This week is a 50-year flood of anger that has broken loose in this city, the likes of which we have not seen since Dr. King was killed. And I am sorry that I have not done more from the law enforcement community to break down that wall of anger. Some of us couldn't bleed, lack of representation. But the flip side of that is some of y'all that are mad today would not vote and would not register and vote. Sharpton said voting will help break down the racial disparities in all communities. And just like the songwriter and the woman who has felt this pain before said, Meanwhile, Sharpton also encouraged the release of information because at this hour, many of the protesters here taking over the streets still want to know why that officer shot Mike Brown so many times. Back to you.